very happy to be joined today by uh, Levi Litfey, who is Professor in Political Science at the Central European University Institute. He's one of the current godfathers of research methods uh, in political science, a leading member of Team Populism, and has an extensive list of publications on surveys and quantitative methodology, twin and family st studies, and the psychology of radicalism and populism. And that's the latter topic I'd like to delve into a little bit more. In particular, his ongoing research on populism and conspiracy theories with reference to the article written together with Bruno Castagno Silva and Federico Vegetti, uh, The Elite is Up to Something, exploring the relation between populism and belief in conspiracy theories that appeared in the Swiss Political Science Review. Uh, so my first question to you is, Levi, uh, why do you theorize this relationship between uh, populist attitudes and belief in conspiracy theories? Hi, everybody. Uh, so, so Stan, so you're taking me back to the Stone Ages here, it feels like, because it's been so long since, uh, since that article has been written. Uh, at least it feels like it's so long. Uh, to, be, to be perfectly honest with you, and I'll be I'll level with you, I'll be perfectly honest with you, uh, I was interested in conspiracy theories even before populism. And I remember some great meetings with, uh, with Andre Crowell and Paul White at the Romanian Political Science Association. They were standing around with a notepad, just thinking about how conspiracy theories are relevant for, for political science. And we had a little data collection going uh, at, at, uh, at CEU with, with our students. And somebody said, you should talk to this Bruno guy uh, who has become one of my closest friends and collaborators since. Uh, uh, because, you know, he might want to put something on that survey. And he said, yeah, let's put, let's put some populism questions on there. So it really evolved from my perspective as, as well, I'm interested in conspiracy theories. Uh, I'm also interested in populism a little bit, but uh, it was it was it was it was a lesser something, and I'm sure these things are related. It feels like they should be related. So so uh, that's how it started. That's how the first paper came about. And actually, it was Bruno who thought, who did the more you know theoretical thinking about this at the time. Now I have to say, since then, I've I, I've done a lot of thinking about about how these two things are related, and. Uh, and I'm coming to the conclusion that it's almost uh, it's almost nonsensical to look at the relationship, because the th the two things are so intertwined, theoretically, that I am not sure we can even distinguish the two things from each other. So let me give you an example. Um, I have pulled up Kirk Hawkins's uh, actually I pulled up the Guardian piece that he wrote an editorial in The Guardian. And he's, if there was a godfather of, 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 of populism research for, you know, head of team populism, that's Kirk Hawkins. So in this piece, he defines, he defines uh, populism as, as uh, he say, it says, to put it uh, succinctly, uh, populist forces tend to frame politics as a struggle between the will of the common people and the conspiring elites. Now, this is obviously a supply side explanation of what populism is. So this is what the populist politicians do. But notice the wording, the, the will of the common people and the conspiring elite. Conspiring is in the definition. So if we look at the demand side of populist, which is what I do, uh, you know, looking at populist attitudes and, and, and public opinion, you take this definition, Think of who would be susceptible to the notion that there's this conspiring elite. Obviously, it's the people who believe in conspiracy theories. So, 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 so it. I mean, the the connection is almost definitional, right? Yeah. So this is also one point you raise in the article somewhere in the sentence that you're looking for the uh, relationship between these attitudes, so belief in conspiracy theories and populist attitudes, not so much a causal connection, because you you argue. They're basically, they're, they both stem from the same underlying uh, dispositions of, of people, if you like. Yeah, yeah. And at the time, we were thinking like, well, we're not going to have any kind of causal leverage here anyway. Theoretically, I don't think we have a strong argument for, for causal direction going one way or the other. Um, one, if you want the if you want the backstory of that article, uh, at a previous version had an experiment in it. 
to try to get some leverage on that, but the reviewers didn't like it, so we took it out. And uh, and and in fact, if you if you if you, it's a special issue on populism that that where it appeared. If you read the introduction of the special issue, uh, there may be even uh, a reference to that experiment, which ended up not being in the paper in in the introduction because the editor was thinking of a previous version of the paper. But I, I, but you know the experiment was weak. We the, the the reviewers were right. It 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 was not a very good way of getting leverage on the causal direction. So I actually don't want to say anything about that. In fact, I I am more interested in driving people to think about it in the in the in the in the system I just laid out. Is conspiratorial thinking even different from populism? And some people say yes. Some people say no. Um, we had a collaboration with the Guardian. Uh, you might have read. Uh, uh, I have that pulled up over here as well. Let me read you. The title of the article is Revealed, uh, the Populists uh, Far More Likely to Believe in Conspiracy Theories. And that was a 20-country study looking at various conspiracy theories, uh, anti-vaccine conspiracies, 9-11 is an inside job. So they looked at very, very specific conspiracies as opposed to the our article, which looked at general tendencies and also found this very notion that uh, that 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 well, people who believe in in uh, I mean, people who who are susceptible to populism have populist attitudes, are also more likely to believe in these conspiracies, and also people who vote for uh, populist parties are more likely to believe in these conspiracies in various countries. They have some nice figures if you if anybody wants to look them up on laying this out. Uh, but at the time, I was arguing to the to the editor we were working with. Uh, um, um, Paul Lewis. Paul, I was arguing to Paul Lewis that, well, okay, well, this might be interesting, but, uh, but I question even the premise of of, of 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 these things are different. And of course, he said, no, 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 they're absolutely different. If you believe in being, if you believe that vaccines are 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 bad, then that's very different from from being a populist. And and this all goes back to definitional questions of what is populism, what is what is a conspiracy theory, uh, what is a general conspiratorial notion, which is what this Guardian article was not tapping; it was tapping specific conspiracies. So, so, um, so, so, yeah. So that that's the question for you. Yeah. And we have more and more studies planned on this. So interesting. I'm looking forward to those. Uh, even though you are reluctant to be drawn into causal relationships, I wanted to. Ask, pick your brains about this anyway. So, and looking not so much at populist attitude, but support for populist parties. If you if you look at that as, as a variable, as a dependent variable, uh, is do you think uh, where does how does the causality work? Do you think that people who believe in conspiracy theories are also more likely to vote for populist parties, or may it be the other way around that populist politicians on the supply side? Uh, spread conspiracy theories, so make people make more people believe in conspiracy theories, or might it work both ways? Uh, I know of this article of Matthijs Rodan et al, who have shown that populist parties they benefit from um, discontent among individuals, but they also fuel discontent among uh, individuals. So might you suspect a similar relationship if you look at conspiracy theories and support for populists? I think you're hitting on a, a, a long-standing question that's been floating in my head of, of who leads and who follows. Uh, uh, this goes back to, uh, you mentioned I've done some work on behavior genetics and, and we've found some very, very interesting cross-country differences on, on this. And, 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 and I always wondered if those cross-country differences really came from the fact that in some societies, politicians lead and then people will follow and I would definitely think that that uh, that uh, a country like mine I'm from Hungary uh, you know Viktor Orban does 180s on certain issues and uh, and and the people just go with them and while in other societies where, where you know longer standing democracies where there are democratic traditions maybe the people maybe the people uh, have much more set preferences and are willing to pick their politicians based on those preferences. So there's obviously, it could go both ways. And obviously in every society, it does go both ways. The magnitude is the question of how much and also the individual differences. Like there are certain people who are more willing to follow 
uh, we have called this the authoritarian personality, right? <laughs> and uh, and there are certain uh, people who are 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 much more, you know, selective and do not pick their favorite party football club and just get attached to them but but rather uh, rather um, you know if 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 their preferences says maybe I should switch parties then they will switch parties and I think that's is that is what is underlying your question here so uh, so if if somebody is willing to get attached to a party and just believe in that party and that person and etc uh, which uh, we know that populists tend to do and follow that leader until the end uh, then they're more likely to to uh, to follow when that leader leads the people into maybe this conspiratorial kind of kind of uh, thinking on the other hand if you look at like like standard political psychology the theories there, would suggest that while well, you have your attitudes first and then your attitudes are, are, are leading to the expression of your behaviors or therefore the attitude, uh, um, be it conspiratorial attitude or even uh, party preferences will lead to you know, who you're voting for. So looking at, looking at it from that theoretical lens, we would say that, uh, that, uh, that it's certainly the attitude uh, leading to the behavior and not vice versa. But politics cannot be seen in that kind of vacuum. It has to be seen in the more macro, micro uh, interaction of the systems level interaction. And uh, this is what makes populism research so awesome because, because it, you can actually have the micro and the macro and study it together and you can have this like systems level view. And it's really, really hard because of that, but it's actually making it really, really fun. It's always complicated, but it gives us more work to do, which is the, yeah. the thing. One other thing I wanted to ask about, so that there's this almost natural relationship, or perhaps they're even partly the same phenomenon, uh, conspiracy theories, uh, bel the belief that authorities are uh, malevolent, and animosity towards things that are official, the idea that people are, are the victims of scheming elites, that these are both elements of populism and conspiracy theory. So it's logical to theorize this connection. However, would you say that there might also be a specific connection between the radical right and uh, conspiracy theories? Because uh, the radical right, due to its nativism, identifies these outsiders that are threatening uh, the nation. So uh, the, the politics of fear and paranoia, as, as uh, Cosmoda has described the politics of the populist radical right. So uh, to what extent might the belief or the inclination towards conspiracy theories be stronger among politicians as well as supporters of, of the radical right in particular? Or do, or do you also think that among populist left-wing parties and politicians, this, this proneness to conspiratorial thinking and expressions uh, is, is equally prevalent? I, I, I would say that, that as a researcher, I am interested in populism. And a lot of the research out there, uh, especially uh, European research, uh, tends to conflate uh, the radical right with populism. And I'll be the first to admit that that ideology is more important than populism. Uh, it's much more important. What what I generally have a problem with in this research agenda is when 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 people just talk about the populist radical right, and and we do not separate out if it's the radical right component that is that is driving something or the populism component or or both and of course i mean we could do that but it's very hard because then we would need instances of of non-populist right and we need instances of populist right and we need non-populist left and, and and populist left and only when we have that complete picture which we almost never have in a single country uh can we really do uh good quality research separating these phenomena so so actually, the populist right, populist radical right research, somewhat bothers me. Now, now you lay out an interesting theory here of why uh, the right. Let's even forget populism, but but why the right might be more susceptible, even independent of populism, to to uh, to, uh, to 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 uh, to you know conspiratorial um, views and thinking and. And, uh, and, of, and of course, the answer is maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe somebody should look at, look at this because might, well, might as well make it an empirical question. We, we could look at this. I mean, we have the data. I mean, the Guardian certainly has the data. Uh, we have the US data that we wrote in this article. So, so it'd be possible to look at this. Uh, 
what what I would come back with is um, is that if if I think of some of the populists left right now, and I'm not a Latin America expert whatsoever, but I hang hang out with a bunch of them, so some things are are rubbing off me. Um, the, you know, they would say that that Chavez's populism is very much driven by the same anti-outsider, uh, anti-U.S., anti, uh, etc. sentiments that that you just described as right-wing characteristic. If we look at Syriza, which is closer to Europe, it's closer to us as as probably the most successful instance of a left-wing populist party in uh, in Greece. Uh, they they rose to power in the middle of of an economic crisis, which really heavily hit Greece, and uh, the European Union was was ready to put the foot down. And their anti outsider European Union or trying to push down sentiment was very much prevalent and present in that conversation. So. Uh, so maybe what you described, even though at face value it would have been very right wing characteristic, maybe 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 not so much. Uh, in the world of populism, this phenomenon does emerge on the on the on the left as well. I don't know. What do you think? So yeah, I think um, yeah that that's, that makes a lot of sense, and also a reason to study just the populist com component and not not just the radical right. Yeah. Uh, you know, if we, yeah, it, it's important to make that theoretical and conceptual distinction also in this case. The final thing I'd like to discuss briefly, like what about the current COVID crisis? In your, in your study, I think you find that populist attitudes are not so much related to the belief that there's some kind of medical conspiracy going on with doctors making people ill, uh, etc. Do you see any of this back among populists? Are they are some of them playing with this idea that COVID is one big conspiracy, or that it doesn't exist, or that it's some kind of elite-driven, uh, yeah, conspiracy a project that's going on uh, with with this particular case? Yeah, I, I, that that's uh, that, that's a good question. Uh, so um, we could talk about it for for hours. I think I think we need. I, when, when assessing this question, we need to look at what's going on around conspiracies. And the COVID crisis is definitely fueling conspiracies. That's quite clear. That's well established uh, and, and, and is, is important. Going from, um, you know, the vaccine will just put microchips in everybody to 5G is what's threading COVID and people are destroying towers in, uh, in various countries. So, so uh, there's definitely something going on there. On the other hand, I think the COVID crisis is is a, is a big challenge to to uh, to populists. And just uh, just yesterday, yesterday would have been October twenty sixth of the twenty twenty. There was an article in the Guardian which uh, did a follow up on that study I just mentioned on that uh, with the vaccines and looked at the level of populism in uh, in the twenty countries or more. Maybe it was more than twenty this time. And uh, what they found was that uh, that there is a decrease in populist attitudes. And uh, this is new. I mean, this is new for us. I just heard it yesterday, but I think it makes sense because uh, because this anti-elite, anti-expert sentiment when the world is uh, going to hell in a handbasket is is really uh, is really is, is a harder sell. Like like we we need. We need experts. I think people recognize that we need experts to, to help us figure the situation out and 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 mitigate the the the, the ills of of this virus on us. So now, how does that come together? I have no idea. I I, I really don't know. I think I think populist politicians are very often opportunistic. They'll try to uh, they'll they'll try to find any kind of elite that they can rail against. Uh, Donald Trump has found the World Health Organization as a wonderful elite. Now that he's the president, it's really hard to rail against uh, politicians like himself. Uh, so he finds another elite to rail against. And the World Health Organization was definitely a convenient target. But I think this is um, this has more to do with the opportunism of 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 populist politicians who will grab onto anything to uh, to to uh, you know to to be able to 
perpetuate their message of 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 they're the only ones who can save the world and 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 these 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 elites are just messing things up for us and uh, yes of course that leads to less mask wearing so people not believing in covid so so all that has negative fallout uh at least in the US, it certainly does. Uh, maybe in other countries, you, know, you see some of it as well. But I don't know if there's a direct connection. And I, and, I, and I sincerely hope that the COVID crisis will be behind us and we will not have to talk about it as, as, as a as research. And there won't be another one in my lifetime, uh, hopefully for another 100 years. So that's what I'm hoping for. Um, as a researcher, though, though uh, we have team teamed up. So, so the European Social Survey has put out a call uh, to study COVID, and uh, and Kostas Kamenis and I put in a proposal uh, on on trying to understand the conspiratorial thinking behind COVID, and uh, and uh, we have some COVID conspiracy and some general conspiracy questions in that that whole set. And one of the other things that are going on with the European Social Service current module that'll go to data collection in 2022, so it'll be a while. Uh, uh, so, so the, the other thing that's going on is that they, they have a democracy module, which I'm also a part of, and I'm a part of because they wanted to strengthen this component of populism in that democracy module. So what this means is there's going to be really, really high quality. I mean, the European Social Survey is, is the best quality data we could ever have uh, as social science researchers that's going to have some, some, uh, some uh, populism data and is going to have some some uh, COVID data and going to have some conspiracy data. And this is something we're very much looking forward to dissecting and, and looking at also more broadly impact on democracy. So these studies are, are coming, this data is in the works. And uh, I know Bruno, Bruno and Federico are very excited to replicate our study um, in a cross country context with this data set. So, so this is, this, it, this is, uh, this, this is what's on the horizon. So this, this research will not go away and we'll be, we'll continue to do it. Yeah. So even though everyone is very fed up with COVID there, there is yeah. still research to be done about it because of course it's socially very relevant also in connection with populism, perhaps in conspiracy theories. So I'd like to thank you very much for this conversation. I think it was very insightful and, and interesting to hear your thoughts uh, on this matter. And thank you for having me.